What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about some solutions for getting better performance on your build. I talked about, one in one of my videos anyways, how to get better frame performance on, say, your high-end build. If you're using like a 3090, just a few things that you can modify. But I also have, uh, you know, access to some other builds that are not necessarily high-end, and I was able to get some stability out of it after making a few tweaks. So, shout out to one of my audience members, Amos Reginald, that basically pointed this to me i've seen it being done before but i never really had enough assurance to think i wasn't going to go ahead and break something so he was the one that assured me don't worry uh your files are going to basically create a new one if you make a mistake or if you delete it so shout out to you i should have known this from working on unreal engine 4 where i had to make a modification of an ini file uh one time for a specific set of assets but it didn't even cross my mind that that's exactly what something like that can do now before we actually go in and start talking about this, I want to go ahead and just preface this with the fact that it's not necessarily a new thing to see a lot of these games from Warner Brothers come out in this state. In fact, when Arkham Knight, which is the game that everybody is praising today, came out, the PC version was actually quite buggy. Right here on my browser, I went ahead and you know put together just a few videos for you if you are interested to watch to see at that time in 2015, June, when Batman Arkham Knight hit the market and how bad the PC port was. A lot of people were not happy about it. I have a video here from someone named Stylosa. This person now covers Overwatch, uh, have Digital Foundry's own assessment of the PC version at that time. You even have Angry Joe who got so mad that he got up, he slammed on his table multiple times before he got up. He was upset. He showed his receipt and was not happy about it because the PC version had been crashing on him multiple times and it was just a nightmare overall. So one thing about me is for some reason, I guess I'm attracted to broken games. I'm also, you know, not ashamed to say that I am. So for those who are bringing in their sanctimony here, I just want to say, you know, you got to be really careful and you just tell yourself, well, maybe it's one of those things where the developers are going to go ahead and patch the game. They will patch the game. And I think they, they are definitely going to do it. But I think their publisher is notorious for pushing these games out without having the game fully fixed. But let's go ahead and look at a possible solution that will probably help you if you're having some frame instability issues. And I think this is probably going to be something that you're going to you know, find beneficial depending on uh, you know, what's going on with your own version of the game. So you want to go into the user settings in terms of the, uh, the config file itself. And the way to do that is you basically go through your main uh, hard drive page in terms of your files and folders, and you go into your local drive, which is usually C on Windows. Uh, you make your way into users and then into the, your PC itself. I named this PC, this PC, literally did. And then you open that up and then you need to find yourself the app data folder, which you hit a forward slash and you type app data and then you hit enter and then you should be in local where local would then show you a bunch of other files that are hidden. You want to go into the Warner Brothers um, folder. This is it right here. Where's that thing over here? What WB games. And then you're going to find Gotham Knights and Steam and you're going to find game user settings. Don't modify your input settings from here. This is what I was talking about in Unreal Engine 4. You can actually go in in your project and modify your input and some other stuff here directly if you want. I did that one time for a car asset and it was fun, but I haven't done that ever since. You want to go into your game user settings and you actually want to work on tweaking these settings over here because this is what we have so far. And because at the root of the problem is, in my opinion, some aspects of the open world, you want to tweak your shading and your foliage quality. Now you want to use settings two or one, and that will probably be your minimum and then save and go away. <laughs> now you can also modify these settings in your uh, graphic settings, but I think they're all under the density settings or something, but this is probably going to be a better way to be able to tune those values just a little lower to squeeze out more FPS. And then you want to change your minimum FPS in this same file, which right now on this folder, it's saying my minimum FPS is 49. So you can come in here and you can change it to 60 or maybe you can go higher if that's what you want to do i'm just going to stick with 60 for now before i go ahead and fire up the game and i'm probably not going to do much here in this video because i'll post-production show you what the settings look like on those two builds before and after now those two builds that i'm citing just for your sake i'm going to go ahead and give you guys some of the stats surrounding those particular pcs one of them is an rtx 2060 laptop it's an acer predator it has i think the regular uh 16 
gigs of RAM, nothing really crazy, but that's just that build. At first, when I was playing without any of these settings and just using the frame limitations and the graphic settings, I was only able to squeeze out, you know, yes, a rough 60 FPS, but it was all over the place. There was no way I could get stability in the frames. But once I went ahead and, uh, you know, tuned this and make sure that, you know, I'd lock the frames to 60, for some reason, it defaulted to a max of 50 FPS. Now, the 50 FPS, I was quite shocked, but it was a stable 50 FPS, and I I thought it was a good, smooth experience. I don't know why it's doing that. I, I moved it up to 70 as well, the, min, the minimum FPS, to see if that would probably, you know, compensate for the 10 fps loss but i don't think it had it in it because that laptop is a little dated but it does a good job in playing games so i'm sure that it will probably uh in a sense i don't know maybe correlate with some low-end pc builds at this rate it also has an uh, i7 9 something something so that 9 generation i7 i think is what is in it and so that's probably something that you can use as a marker to go by the second build is a desktop, belongs to one of my kids, and it is an Intel i7 7700K. That's the CPU, and it uses a GTX 1080 Ti, and that one was able to keep a steady 60 FPS after this tweak. At first, I was getting all kinds of weird FPS issues, but once I made that tweak, the FPS basically just stabilized for the most part. Now, there are places in the open world that continue to give these issues. One of them is close to the Monarchs Theater, and the other one is close to the GCPD uh, Special Crimes Unit. That area seems to be super dense for some reason, and it will continue to give you frame drops regardless when you ride your Batmobile through that place. Usually, once you ride it through all of the other aspects of the open world that aren't as dense, you will get a stable frame rate going on henceforth. Hopefully, they're able to narrow down these issues and bring a patch to allow for people to be able to play the game at higher FPS. And I think that's probably one of the major reasons is speed and the streaming of the whole world that is part of what's causing the issues. I showed you guys some gameplay yesterday that was actually hitting around 120 FPS, depending on where you were. And once you got into like, you know, a tunnel or some area that was actually very well, uh, you know, I would say controlled or enclosed using a high-end build you could get some really serious fps and some good stability here i was actually clocking around 120 frames per second but yes it was a 3090 that i was running with but i mean if you're using anything other than that you should be able to get at least you know 70 80 fps out of this game without any problems so the pc port right now is probably the you know in my opinion the port that is close to being the better of the port ports uh hopefully they get a console patch but for some strange reason, I don't really know how they're going to pull that off, honestly. Not a developer, a learning developer. That's who, That's all I am. I'm a baby. But the, <laughs> I don't know, the scale of this game is just so ambitious. I don't really know how they're going to do it. But I'm hoping that they're able to go ahead and find where they can make compromises in the overall environment design of the game for the console version. Make some tweaks in terms of the lighting that are not so apparent that gamers don't feel like they've you know, basically had a chunk of the game ripped out, but they do it in an artistic style that actually works. So let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, make sure you follow the instructions carefully. Hopefully we don't get into trouble. <laughs> My audience member of mine told me that this is something that gamers have done all the while on PC games. And yes, I've seen a lot of different games do it, especially during the time of the Arkham Knight, uh, you know, PC versions. When I go back and look at, you know, those videos anyways, because I played on console, I didn't even know the fiasco at that time. But when I go back and look at those videos, I see a lot of people give tutorials on how to make those tweaks and even some other games. I've seen that as well. So again, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments section. And if at any rate you do, you break something, just uninstall your Steam version or your Epic Games version uh, and then <laughs> reinstall it again. So thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.